Hello. I am overjoyed that you are watching our television broadcast. Alexander Arthur of Word of Life Christian Center brings forth the word from God, especially for you. And we thank you so much for joining us this, this morning. Now we are on every week. Every week, Pastor brings back a live message with a live audience. And most of the time, I am in that audience praying for you, praying with Pastor and the rest of the congregation. The word is mighty that is brought forth by Pastor Arthur, and we thank you so much for joining us. Remember, the word of life changes lives. And at Word of Life Christian Center, we truly believe that. And if there's a change that you're praying for, stay tuned week after week on Thursday morning. God bless you. Lift hands on the head. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is to us now. How you can make the Word of God flesh to you. Welcome to This Word is Your Life with Pastor Alexander Arthur. Today, Pastor Arthur brings the message, Why Faith is Important. How to exercise your authority in Christ by faith. You know, we are doing a series on faith. And this is, I believe, our eighth installment of this. And you're going to find out today that this whole plan or arrangement pre-planned by God was to make sure that you win in this life. And I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 10. And we will pick up from there, verse, starting from verse 4, thereabout. As you turn into it, let me say this to you, that the principles of faith and your authority in Christ that I'm about to share with you today will unlock and reveal to you the supernatural with which, by which, through which you can, as we sang earlier, take back what the devil has stolen from you and claim the promises of God that are yours. God's spiritual, physical, and financial provision is available to every believer. God's spiritual, physical, financial provision is available to any believer, but you must understand the methods God has set in motion to release those things to you. You must understand that there is a method, a means by which those things can be released to you. If you call yourself a believer, then you got to also recognize that to say that you are a believer means you are a receiver. A receiver of God's provisions, a receiver of God's promises. If you say that you are a believer, that's what you are telling God. And God is saying to you that if you accept, you accept 
that there are spiritual, physical, financial provisions that he has made available to you, you must then also understand the means or the methods by which you can claim and receive those things. That's what this message is about this morning. So Matthew chapter 10, go to verse 5. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. It says, um, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. But, rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You read that and say, Jesus, that's not fair. How is it that you will send them to the house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but not to the Canaanites? Not to the others. Why not, Jesus? He instructed the disciples when he sent them forth, don't go to a place where the house is not dwelt in by those who have covenant relationship with God. And the reason simply is this. These people are not looking to God for provisions. They wouldn't know what it means to have a Messiah. They wouldn't know what it means to have a prophet in their midst. They wouldn't know that. So he said, don't go to any place other than the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because these are the people who are expecting the Messiah to show up. These are the people who can understand the work of the disciples so that at least they can receive what the disciples have to offer them. Are you getting me here? This is why sometimes you wonder, why is it that not everybody gets it? Jesus knew not everybody would get it. So don't waste your time on people who will not get it. There will be a time for them but not now. Now, what I want you to do is to go to the houses of the people who will get it by virtue of the fact that they have a covenant relationship with God. They understand that there are provisions made to them by virtue of that covenant, and therefore, they are more likely to receive what you tell them. And so I'm here this morning to say to you that you too are the people that can receive what I'm about to share with you. Because we just finished singing a song, isn't it? That we are going to take back what the devil has stolen from us. Well, there are people today who don't even believe in the devil, much less to believe that the devil has stolen anything from them. But you, on the other hand, you believe that there is a devil. Not only that, you also know that he has stolen something from you. And so it is our time here now to see to it that we get back from him what he has stolen from us. But go to verse 7 and you will see something here. It says, and as you go, preach saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. These are people that can receive that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The non-covenant people will not receive. All right? Verse 8. Now, what I'm trying to say to you, well, okay, I'll get to that. Verse 8. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, or freely you have believed, Freely give. Verse 
These people have been anointed by Jesus to go forth and give to people that are expecting God's promises and provisions in their lives to receive it. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, with that said, I want to say this to you. That unless you believe that you have authority, because what we just read there was Jesus authorizing the disciples to go out and give freely what he had given to them to do. He authorized them. And so I'm going to talk to you about your authority in Christ Jesus. But how to exercise that authority by faith? Because these people obviously did. How do we know that? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Listen to what it was said about it here. And the 70 returned. These two, these men that were sent by Jesus, and he told them, go to the house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, go there and freely give to them what I have given to you. Heal the sick, right? Is it what he said? The lame and all the other things that, and, and let the blind see and all the other things that were just right there. And he says here, and the 70 return again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You authorize us to go out and do something in your name. When somebody gives you authority, you do what you do in the name of that person or that institution. For example, we have police officers who can stand in the middle of a street and direct traffic of 18 wheelers and all the huge vehicles and they stand in the middle of the street telling the drivers where to go. Now, ordinarily, if you were to go stand out there without a police uniform on and try to direct traffic, we may have to pick you up from the ground flattened because nobody gave you authority to go stand there and do it. But on the other hand, when a police officer stands up in the middle of the street and direct traffic, people respond to his authority. Why? Because of the power behind his authority. And the power behind his authority becomes the badge. You know how many times, show me your badge. If you say who you say you are, show me your badge. Because the badge licenses them and grants them with the authority to do what they have been authorized or licensed to do. Yeah. Are you listening to me here? Yeah. And the reason why they are able to do it is because of what backs them. What backs them is the mighty power of the government. At the same time, if you get licensed by Jesus, authorized by Jesus and you are given a license to operate as a believer then you also have power that backs you but it's not might it is almighty power 
So then, what we have to understand is that if we are going to exercise our authority in Christ, we will need to do so by faith. I listen to me here. Now, come with me to the book of Luke. I, I uh, sure that that little illustration explains something to you to help you get to where we're going next. Because it is important to understand authority. If you understand authority, I submit to you, you will also understand the power and the exercise of the power of faith. So it is important to understand authority. Authority, I should define it for you, is the right to use power. Authority is the right to use power, to exercise power. The right. When we say that someone doesn't have authority to use power, we say that person is lawless. We say that person has usurped authority. That in America, to have the authority to function as a president of these United States, it comes by winning an election. If you win the presidential election, you become the president. Your authority then is what is given to you by the people Amen. who voted you into power. They can put you in and they can put you out. Now, if somebody else got into the White House and called himself president, Without the people putting him there, we say that person is lawless or that person has usurped authority, taken authority that was not meant for him to have. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now, before we read what we're going to read from the book of Luke chapter 7, I want to show you something here. When God created man, He gave man authority. He licensed man. He gave man the right to exercise power. And the authority is found in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Let's go there. Book of Genesis chapter 1. And let's look at verse 28. It says this. It says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them. And so when you bless, you release the blessing through words. And God blessed them and said, When you curse, you do the same thing. You use words to curse. To so be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And what? Subdue it all. If God gives man the word, which then becomes the license for man to use the power God gave him by the blessing to subdue it, to subdue anything is to bring something under control. So replenish the earth and subdue it, bring it under control. Have dominion, have authority over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That is God's release of authority to man to use God's power from his word 
to subdue the earth. Are you with me? Are you with me? This was God's intention from the very beginning. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. It says, now the serpent, the devil, was more subtle or cunning or deceitful than any beast of the field. We have some very exciting news to share with you. I have here with me uh, Minister Bess White our Minister of Outreach here at Word of Life Christian Center International, and also uh, Minister Kweku Fukusetre, who is uh, the Dean of our Bible College and Chairman of the Board of Directors here at Word of Life. Uh, we want to tell you about a conference which is uh, to be held here at Word of Life, and uh, we want to tell you about how excited we are in the preparation and planning towards it. Uh, we truly believe that this is a conference that will be quite an enlightening occasion for all those who uh, will attend. Uh, we trust the Holy Ghost to be here to minister to each one of us at that time. We also are looking forward to bringing some powerful speakers that will come uh, and share with you the Word of God and even with that have uh, the ministry of laying of hands upon those uh, that would like for that to happen to them while they are attending the conference. We have some wonderful things that we want to share with you down the road. But this is just a, a, a save the date kind of uh, message to you. And so by all means, uh, as we go forward, listen to what uh, we have to share with you. I'll throw it to a minister of uh, outreach, uh, Minister Bess White, to tell you about a few more things about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, this conference is going to be held this coming September 21st on Friday all day, then half day on Saturday, September 22nd. For all pastors, ministers, lay people, uh, it's going to be highly anointed. Uh, the registration fee will be $65 for non-CDM members and $50 for CDMA members, but with a $10 discount if you register by August 1st. We're looking forward to seeing you. We are, we are excited about this. And Minister Kwaku can give you a little bit more information. I think we're having international guests too, aren't we? Yeah, this conference, we are inviting people all over the world. They are coming, it's going to be global. So we pray that you will come and be part of us. So call and then register. And uh, come be part of this wonderful uh, conference. We we'll thank you that you will you, you'll come and join us. Well, praise the Lord. We thank God for, for hearing us on this and keep on watching us because we will be having some subsequent news and information about this conference uh, and, and hopefully uh, you will, uh, as you were just told, uh, either call us 615-876-3086 to register or go online, lifewarriorcenter.org to uh, get online there and register or email us. Uh, Ramona, R-A-M-O-N-A-1, lifewordcenter.org, uh, and we trust to respond to you very quickly and let you know that we've gotten your, your registration. Also, what we want to do is to make sure that you know that uh, at the conference, your $65 will include luncheon on both days. So you have a free meal. Well, I guess you pay for it, but it is included in the cost uh, for lunch on Friday as well as on Saturday. And all the materials that will be presented will make them available to you. We are about giving you an advantage. We are about making sure that what God has called you to fulfill on this earth, that you are able to do so. You know, it's so important for, for the body of Christ to come together to maximize the vision that God has given to each of us. This is an occasion for that to happen. We we'll trust that in that environment of the rich presence of the Holy Ghost, that maximi maximization of that vision will occur. You will live blessed. You will live with the direction and guidance uh, of what uh, is, are the next steps in your life as you seek to serve the God that is the creator of heaven and earth. We know for sure that we are in the last days and it's about time we gather we gathered together, came around the Word of God, came around the Spirit of the Living God, came around with people with like-minded spirit, faith, baptism, and one Lord, 
and praise and worship God together and hear a message that is a life-changing message so that we can all be encouraged to go forth and finish the course that God has given to each of us. May God bless you and listen, uh, we'll come back to you another time and let you know uh, the, the developments, but so far yet, we are just so thankful to God that you get a chance to be part of us. God bless you and see you soon. And we always do end with our famous uh, words or slogans or motto, whatever you want to call it. But we say this and join me as we say that Jesus is Lord. And with all you're getting, get on the standing for the word of life changes lives and love never fails. God bless you. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of either an audio or video copy. CDs and audio tapes are $5 and video cassettes or DVDs are 10 This series is available in its entirety at a special package price by calling 615-876-3086 or by email at pastor1 at lifewordcenter.org. Oh, thank you for watching this program today with us. God bless you. You know, it's always wonderful to know that we have a viewing audience who are following this program every Thursday, and it is so wonderful to know that you are there watching us now. Listen, uh, what we want you to do is, uh, every once in a while, communicate with us, send us a letter, something in the mail, to let us know how much this program is being a blessing to you. Uh, you know, we also have uh, those who are in our department of uh, intercessory prayer who are always looking out, praying for those that will send prayer requests and all the needs that they may have so that we can pray over them. So by all means, uh, communicate with us with whatever needs that you may have so that we can truly know that we have uh, the assistance and the help of the Holy Ghost to enable us to have a very wonderful relationship together. We'll be praying for you, uh, airing programs on the air that will bless you to cause you to grow in grace, to grow in the things of God. So call us, or if you will, or write to us, or even online, send us something by email we would love to hear from you. Now, my announcer will come back and I, he will talk to you about how you might be able to get a copy of this uh, very wonderful program we just finished watching, and we hope that it will be a blessing to you. May God continue to bless you. And again, we always say in this church, in our ministry, that Jesus is Lord. And with all you're getting, get understanding. For the word of life changes lives, and love never fails. Be blessed.